Hello viewers, we welcome you to our program Connection today. We're glad that you can be with us. Uh, thank you for watching. And I've got Moses and Eve who are with me again. And maybe you can remember in our previous program that Moses had a, a question right at the end and we said we'd answer that in the next program. So here we are. So Moses, I'd just like to ask you if you could repeat your question. My name is Moses Kendrick and thank you so much for giving me the chance to ask a question. In this program so the question was that we have doubts in our minds and as logical people we have reasoning behind everything how can we know that what is the voice of the Lord and what is our own thought how can we distinguish between the two mm. yeah it's yeah, a very good question because I think that's uh, a question that plagues a lot of people you know wondering because uh, you know, we can hear three voices. You know, that's the voice of the Lord who's speaking to us. That could be our own mind that is talking to us. And also the devil can talk to us. You know, so we, we can hear from three different voices. So it's important for us to discern uh, which is from the Lord. Now, I think um, we can fairly easily discern what's from the devil because it'll be going against God's word to yeah. start with, so that's not really a problem for us, I think. I think the real problem is, yeah, when is it my, my mind that's speaking and when is it the Spirit of God that's speaking? Now, I'd just like to say something about this in a way that we know God. We only know God as he reveals himself to us. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, because he's a spirit being, we just can't walk into the karma and say, oh, hello, and shake hands and have to sit down, have a little chat and get to know him, you know, that, that's not possible. So uh, how do we get to know God? Well, we get to know God through reading and studying his word and meditating on his word. And I must have, it, I find that meditating on God's word that opens up your spirit to receive from God. Because actually when God speaks to us, we don't hear with these ears. You know, it's, uh, we hear with our, our spirit man. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember a, a good example of that. I remember the first time I heard God's voice was when uh, I was at Bible school many, many years ago. And I was up very late one at night. It was uh, very quiet. Everyone else was asleep. And I was sitting there and I was uh, studying my Bible. I was reading through the Bible and studying it. And all of a sudden I heard these words, you know, I want you to teach my word, you know. And I, I was so <laughs> startled. I think, where did that come from, you know? I, yeah. But it was it's God terrifying. speaking to me, you know. Yeah. But it was, it was so real. Yeah. It was just as if there was an audible voice yeah. in the room. Just like well, Samuel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, but mostly the voice of God is like a, a very small voice. Um, you can remember uh, that story about Elijah. You know, yes. when he went to Mount, yeah. the mountain there to have a meeting with God. You know, he was there and um, I don't know whether I get the, the order right, but there was a, a, mostly there was like a, a very strong wind, you know, it was mm. tearing up the rocks. And Elijah, he just stayed put. He didn't move. Mm. He was in this little cave and he just stayed there. You know? yeah. And then there was the uh, earthquake, you know, shaking everything. He still didn't move. You know, and then there was this great fire, you know, burning, uh, everything. He stayed there. And then it was very quiet and it was just a, like a gentle little breeze blowing. And that's when he got up and went outside to meet God. Yeah. You know, uh, he's, uh, Elijah is uh, like one of my real heroes yeah. in the Bible. I think he, he really knew God. Because I think for most of us, you know, uh, if the earthquake or the wind or the fire had come, we'd have automated yeah. it. Oh, this must be God and run outside. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so we need to be patient. Yeah, I think we're always sort of looking for some big thing. Yeah. You know? We're yes. looking for a big thing. And because of that, we miss the little things. Yeah. You know? And the little things are the important ones because the little things, they add up and they become bigger things. So it's uh, learning, we have to train our, our spirit man and to learn uh, to understand the voice of God. Now, there's one way that we can do that. I've mentioned the factor of meditating yeah. on God's word. That's very important mm -hmm. because uh, 
when you're meditating, uh, it's not like sort of yogis or whatever are doing, you know. Yeah, chanting mantras. Yeah, chanting mantras yeah. or whatever. No, it's getting quiet before God, meditating. You know, it's, it's like you talk to yourself about the word. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often do that. I read, I'm saying, Lord, what are, you, what are you trying to say with this verse? What are you saying to me? You know, and I'm asking questions then. And I'm sort of, it's like I'm muttering to myself, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which we often do. But that is act meditating. You're actively involved. At the same time, you're, 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 very, you're listening. Your ears are attuned to pick up what God wants to say yeah. to you. you know, and yeah. So um, what you are saying is in order to receive a miracle, we need to meditate the doubts uh, the doubts that our mind is having about the worldly things to seek a miracle, we need to meditate. That's what you're saying. Um, not exactly. I think we're getting two different things here. Like yeah. doubts, uh, because is one we've got thing. doubts. You know, doubt when how to, yeah, yeah, how to seek a miracle. Yeah. But yes, uh, sometimes know. doubts also are the way for a miracle, and that miracle is a testimony for others that they can have faith in God. Mm, can you explain how that can come out of doubt? Uh, uh, just like Thomas. Thomas doubted Jesus that he is a ghost. He was uh, like uh, doubting that he, Jesus cannot he, raise he from the dead. Yeah. But yeah. maybe other disciples had the same doubt, but they were scared to ask Jesus. So once he asked the question the and he showed clear. that put the finger in my wounds, yeah. I am risen, I am alive. So the doubts of others were also gone. Yeah. This was a miracle which Jesus showed and they took uh, out the doubts of everyone. So sometimes I think the way you are saying, we need doubts yeah. to show miracles, which gives us faith. Mm. Yeah, I sort of think, look a little bit differently. I think uh, doubt is something that um, works uh, against our faith. Doubt is something that, that stops our faith, in fact. Um, we can have doubts about God's word or God's mm. a promise in God's word. And if we have a doubt, uh, I keep that doubt in my mind, it's going to stop me believing to that. So I will never be, if I have doubt, I'll never be able to believe for a miracle because I'm doubting it. Mm. You know? yeah. And so I'm, it's like I'm uh, double-minded. Yeah. You know, and, and James says if we are double-minded about anything, we cannot receive them from God. Yeah. You know, so, so we've got to be yeah. uh, single-minded mm. about something. And that means we've got to learn to deal with the doubts. And the way to do that is yeah. to... That was my question. How do we overcome? To, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do we overcome those doubts? The way to in overcome order to, doubts is yeah. to, we need to feed our faith mm. with the Word of God. Yeah. You know, maybe specifically with promises to have to do with what we're seeking from God. You know, that is the best way. Um, what I wanted to share with you is a, is, a, is a prayer that's in Ephesians chapter 1, which Paul uh, prayed regularly, probably every day he prayed this prayer for the believers in Ephesus. Now, I think if he could pray this prayer for them, we can pray it for ourselves yeah. because we are also believers. We believe in the Lord. So it's important to pray this. And I... Uh, discovered like the prayers that are in the Bible are the, some of the most powerful prayers that there are because we know they're inspired by the Spirit of God. Yes. You know, so if we pray them, we're on the right track, mm -hmm. put it that way. You know, and you know, he just says this, you know, he says, I, um, I don't, in verse 16, I says, I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. You know, so he's saying we need a revelation from God in order to know him. Mm. You know, and that word know, that Greek word there, means like a whole or a complete knowledge of God. You know, not just knowing a little bit about him you know we all know something about yeah. god you know but that knowledge needs to grow continually grow and increase because revelation is progressive yes. we don't right. know everything we're still learning see mm. you know, right up until the the day that we die so he prays that the eyes of our heart 
would be enlightened. You know, he's not saying the eyes of our mind, but he's saying our heart, because that's where we hear the voice of God. So the eyes of our heart would be enlightened, so that we would know. And he prays three things. He calls it like the hope of God's calling in our life. In other words, what's His will for me, for me, mm. which is yeah. what a lot of Christians wonder yeah. about. What's God's will for yeah. my life? You know. Well, if you pray this prayer, you'll soon find out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll discover what is God's will. So, to knowing the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance? In other words, discovering who I am in Christ, what I, it means to be a child of God, because everything that belongs to Jesus, the Bible says, belongs to me, mm. because I'm a joint heir with Jesus. So yeah. everything he has is mine. That's a nice thought. Yeah? Mm. And the third thing, he says, um, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? You know, And that's the same power, he goes on to say, it's the same power that raised Jesus up from the dead and mm. seated him in the heavens next to the Father and gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow mm. and confess that he is Lord. You know, so I've discovered that by praying this prayer, it helps to open up my spirit and uh, to discern more the voice of the Lord. But what, something I, I, this is what I've discovered in my personal experience the more time, it's just like any other relationship or mm -hmm. friendship that you might have with someone. Yeah. Yeah. Like the more time you spend with that person, the more you the more get you to know them. Yeah. You know, the and at a certain point, you, you, get. you know yeah. how yeah. they would react in a certain yeah. situation yeah. Yeah. because you've spent time with them. Yeah. You've got to know them. Mm -hmm. Now, in the same way, uh, in getting to know the Lord, by spending more and more time with Him, you know, you learn to know Him and learn to know the way he thinks, the way he sees things, mm. which is very different. You know, that's what the verse we shared uh, last week about, um, renewing our minds with the word of God. Yes. So uh, in this way, we can learn to understand the spirit of God. But it's not something you can, unfortunately, you cannot learn it from a textbook. It's something that you learn through experience. experience. Yes. You yeah. know, and it's, um, yeah. It will. Uh, it's a step of faith each time, and to you know, and gradually, as we become more and more accustomed to that, you become um, more relaxed, yeah. more at ease with yeah. that, and you're not so that, nervous about with it that because you're, with him. you're sure. Yeah, this is all, and you know, uh, this is the Lord speaking to you. Uh -huh. See, His voice is, even though it's a soft voice, it's a little bit more authoritative, authoritative than our mind the voice of our mind. Uh, oh. So does that help you at all a little bit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it gives a rise to another the, question. Another question yeah. yeah. That sometimes uh, the Satan also speaks and uses the tools of the the Holy Bible or that he, he disguises himself yeah. in a certain way that we might think that this is a voice from God. And sometimes but it is not. And sometimes uh, the Satan also uses authority. Yeah. 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 See, the point here is, you know, you're right, the, uh, Paul says that in Corinthians, he was able to disguise, uh, disguise himself as an angel of light, mm. you know, which, um, with other words. Um, he is a deceiver. I mean, when Jesus, he tempted Jesus, uh, he used scriptures. Mm. Well, he was misusing them, but yeah. <laughs> he did use some scriptures to try and uh, deceive Jesus, or getting tempting, getting Jesus to do what he wanted him to do. Mm. You know, and he could do the same with us. And this is why I think it's so important that we do know and understand the scriptures ourselves, that we can recognise what God is saying to us. Mm. You know, um, so we, that we won't be deceived. You know. Uh, not being deceived is our responsibility. Let me say that. I think it's very clear. You know, we, we can never stand, come before the Lord and say, well, like some people joke about and say, well, the devil made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Yeah. So, um, but it is our own responsibility. So we need to know God's word. Uh, I remember when Paul preached in Berea the first time, the people listened to him, but then they went home and they checked the scriptures themselves 
to see if he was telling the truth. Mm. You know, you know, and that's what we need to do. Don't rush into things. Don't be blind. But keep our eyes and our ears open and study the Word of God and check it there. But that's all our time for today. So we have to close thank the program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much thank for, being with for answering for our questions. questions. Thank you. I'd just like to thank you, the viewers, for watching today. And we hope that this has also may, maybe helped you in your personal life. And we'll be back with the next program next week. So thank you. Goodbye and God bless you.